and standing at attention. I'll have to try and side. spot that sometime. Michigan, of course, is a mitten. Yeah. I can always remember Michigan because it's always because it's just Michigan. It's, yeah. Yes. But damned if I can name Ohio from the rest. Well, no, I can't now because I saw it on so many election maps. But oh yeah. Before that, yeah, it's no. one that's sort of bad shaped. Yeah. Oh. Telling Massachusetts from what's that other state that has the sort of vaguely bone shape like Maryland? Or that's the, 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 the I think it I think it's Massachusetts from Maryland. Massachusetts is like the the it's like like a shoe. And it's got Rhode Island number and Delaware. Yeah, see that's another thing I can remember. A little bit more like, okay, that's Connecticut and that's I think I wonder how well I would Vermont do Vermont and New Hampshire. Now those nest nicely together and Vermont is shaped like a V, so that's fairly easy. Oh, okay. I never got I never got Vermont shaped like a V. I I, I couldn't ever um tell them apart. <laughs> okay, one of them's Vermont and one of them's New Hampshire. So I just wrote them across both. Um <laughs> I had to take the tests. It's close enough. Yeah, yes, there's this geography test online where you have to, like, you're given a state and you just have to drag it to where it belongs on an empty map. Oh my, that's yeah. interesting. I wonder how well I do. I do pretty well. Well, I mean, it gets easier as you go along and you have more context. If, you, if you're unlucky enough to get, at the very beginning, the big blocky states, oh, then you only get it to you one at a time? Yeah. That sucks. Did I tell you what it's called? I mean, you start, like, with... California and no, Texas. Right, and then New Mexico is next to that, and then Colorado and Wyoming go up here somewhere, and then there's Utah up here somewhere, and that has well, a notch on it. Yeah, I can do Utah because it's got a notch, but damned if I can put it where it goes without having to... Okay. What are we saying? Is that rewound, by the way? What? Is that rewound? Um, I believe so. It says it's only two minutes in. Okay. Two minutes? I wonder if it's got my cat on the rest of it. Uh, yes. <coughs> So there's basically two ways we can go about this. We either create words from the phonology and just sort of randomly mash stuff together and put a few words in a sequence and make up what that means and then retroactively decide what the morphology and the, um, and the words and the syntax of it was. Or we could... <coughs> Uh, or we could create a, a phrase that we want to translate in English, for example, and then make up a way to translate that into the uh, game language. Agile. Uh, agile, sorry. Oh, yes. Uh, agile. 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 Yeah, agile. 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 Not a child. Agile. Agile. Yeah, agile. agile. Okay, so. Yes, anyway. Uh, preferences amongst those two options? Or preference uh, for another option? I'd rather do it randomly. What? I'd rather do it randomly. Randomly? Yes. Uh, my belief is that the randomness would probably fit better into the general approach we've been having to this. <laughs> <laughs> there is that. Uh, Dersheng, would you like to render an opinion? Uh, okay, random it is. So, let's see, shall we just make a four-word phrase? Each person just makes up a word? Okay. Yes? Right. <laughs> or, yeah, that works. So just make up a word, whatever length you want, small or large. Um, Darshan, you go first. So you've got the phonology, you've got the phonotactics. So just make up a word. Unfortunately, I don't remember the IPA stuff, so... What? I don't remember all that IPA stuff, so I don't really know what those sound like. Well, you can pass. Okay, uh, We won't laugh. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> there. Now it's over. Um... Just with the diamond. Oh, cool. <laughs> 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 oh, <it's> so <laughs> At least I think it is. I'm not sure if that's actually a click, but I'm <laughs> pretending it is. I'm the end of the X. 
pretending you're trying to hock a loogie. Uh, it's not that different. It's very funny. And then the, the K one. Is K. What's the capital B? <laughs> K is a K. Capital B is a. Oh, bilabial. Right. Bilabial trill. Just combine that bottom one and the top one, so I guess that'd be like... So write it down. Like write, it up, write it on the board on the right. And write it in an IPA. For now. For now. Phonemes or...? Uh, well, surface form, but if, if she writes a, a bottom form, we'll translate. Um, did we have verb centric? Yeah, you that's not a possible word in language. We need a vowel. We need a vowel. Yes. In between. Or actually anywhere. Uh, no, in between. No. Anywhere. Oh, yeah, we haven't decided on consonant clusters. So, yeah, anywhere. And the vowels are those? Yeah. The dots are for orthography on the other system. Um, so yeah, hawk. Hawk. Oh my god, that's exactly what I was going to do. <laughs> that work? <laughs> yeah, although actually what ends up happening is we get... First of all, um, we'll change to... And also IBA distinguishes between this and this. Sorry, uh, oh, so are we it does? Are we using? Yeah. Yes, it does. This is like in car. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's like in Spanish. Ah. Okay. Oh, and yeah, I guess it does. Um, so, something like, I, don't, I can do it. In so. Americanized IPA, it's ignored because we don't have the difference. Yeah, so by our rules, that's what's going to And the, the characters above each of the IPA letters is what it would be in the language. So yeah, our vowel symbols. So hawk, 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 hawk. Okay. Woot. Some up. Uh, can you close those also? Oh, you're. But I see. Things. Yeah. Okay. That works. Should we? Mm. What? Leave a space even if it's usually not done. With that. Yeah. Leave a space. IPA is silly in some ways, and I think it is done if it's a if you're explicitly trying to show that these are words. But well, let's see if you can just can't find which ones are as words. Yeah. Yes, something like that. There's no such thing as words. There's only morphemes. Um, um question mark again. Uh oh, Klaus, stop. So. Could you put that at the beginning of the sentence? Or a yes. Word? Um, like Arabic words. Oh. Um, um, for example, um, there is a television program that's called Al Arabiya in English. In uh, Arabic, it's pronounced Al, -al Arabiya. And there's a glottal stop before that. Al Arabiya. That's actually quite common. Who's that? Yeah, who's that? Um, chrik, 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 Okay, Phil? Oh, you just live in the best ones, don't you? Um, Oh, where, I, what about the um, stresses? Uh, Is that aye or aye? 
I don't think we have defined stress. We haven't defined stress. But an ultimate, ultimate. So we don't have to do it now, I guess, for this word. Well, well, we'll get to that. Uh, and one more. Um. I like vowels. Cell phone policy around here. Everyone look aside. Orthography is just a pipe. Yeah. Okay. Or underscore. Um, I don't remember what the official IPA name is, but that's cool. Um, um, so O again. O M. No, that's an E turned sideways. Whatever. I'm calling it an O M circle S. Circle. No, O, M, circle, M. Um, okay, so. Where do you want to? Yeah, okay. S, S, M, double dot. Yeah. Okay. So next, um, let's. We're assuming that I was aligning it. Yeah. I'm fixing. I don't. I don't think that would get preserved in rapid writing. Oh, wow. I think. I think the, the second half of it would get swooped. Mm -hmm. I did it. Maybe. I think you downslope the left side and then you'd hook back the right. How do you do it? Like. 
Okay. Oh, that's a triangle. Yeah. I do it the other way around. I do it clockwise. Yeah, I would end up just as distinguished from the sun. Which was the last one? The triangle? Yeah. Uh, yes, anyway. Let's not get into that for now. Okay. So, we're presuming that it's phototactically fine, because we did, we just did it. Right. Uh, so, like someone else said, stress. So, you have, well, for one, there's stress, and for two, there's um, super segmentals. So, are we having tone? No. No tone? Someone No. No? <laughs> Please, for the love of God, no? <laughs> I don't know what you have in English, and it was awful. Dershing? Would you like to have tone? No. No? Fine. Okay, but we, it, we do have stress. So, um, and you might have tone in the same way that English has tone, even if it's not a tonal language. Uh, yes. So, stress. Are we going to stress it like English does, or like Japanese does, or what? What do you mean? Well, like English, you stress things by making them louder oh. and making the pitch slightly higher. How does Japanese? Japanese just sort of goes in a straight line, and then they do a little thing with the stress. Um, Sounds about the same. What? Yeah, it does. Uh, but I'm it's not just tonal. It. It's tonal stress. Yeah, but I don't. What does that mean? Uh, like English, you raise Japanese your voice. Japanese has like is not a tonal language, but it has a consistent high tone, except when it hits a stress thing, and then it shifts to low. At least I think that's what it does. Oh, low? Okay. I think it does. I thought you just did the other way around. Hana, hana Yeah, it kind of drops. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, but you don't make it louder like you do in English. Um, so. Shall we assume that English. we do English type? English. Yes? No? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. So then where are we inserting um, stress? Kek. So, hek, hek, hek. Obviously hak. doesn't, hak, sorry. Obviously it doesn't have a stress, because it's just one syllable. Mm -hmm. um, it's stressed to tell. So, hek, 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 First or last? Last. It's my word, okay? Last. <laughs> fine, fine, fine. Before the K. Okay. Go. How do you pronounce that? Aye oh. or aye? Aye. Aye? Yeah, second. And does this turn into. Um, you should have it before the, the J. J. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing. If this is turning into a glide, then it sort of down, uh, binds to the bell. In Spanish, you would. No, there's a word that yeah. is aye, and it's before the, that. I don't th yeah, I don't think the AJ glides. Well, for example, in English, um, that's um, I, the letter that I is that in IPA. It's an A with an off glide of a J. Uh, so, ah, yeah. I, so ah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, yeah. So you want, you want it to still to be separate? Yeah. Okay. So, then are we counting the glide as a consonant for the purpose of phonotactics? Because otherwise, mm. it's going to have to be three syllables. So it's either three or two. Uh, and if it's two, the, then the glide either has to be treated as a consonant that's being clustered on one of the two, or it's being treated as, um, 
or it's being treated as an off-glide, which attaches to the valve for it. Because it only occurred between two valves. Right. Um, it, the J comes because it's up a little off the eye, but I think it's still a consonant. Or it could be an on-glide, I think. Can you have an on-glide? Yeah, I guess you can. So. I don't know what would be the comparative merits of these approach. Neither do I. What would you like? Let's make it a consonant. Okay. Yeah. So it's a consonant. Um, so by the supposed universal of of syllable formation, like I went over how many weeks ago, uh, you have greedy onsets. So this is a is a syllable, not this. Yes. Therefore, it's there. And lab. Lab, uh, lab, has the one. Oh, actually, is B syllabic? Oh, so th that's another question. So our continuance, we have a few. We have um, je, uh, j, um, uh, what else? Um. Etc. The white balance is being funny. Um, so, are we going to say that those are acceptable as um, syllable cores? Like, for example, you could interpret this one either as one syllable, lamp, or lamp. It feels like two, but I don't know if that's just us having trouble pronouncing it. Lamp is, is one. Lamp. But you could pronounce it as la, ah. which makes for more spittle. So, preference? I think it's a bit difficult for us to read like one syllable. I think we have to stop and think about it before, before we okay. read it. Okay. So, shall we consider B the. Okay, shall we consider it to be a vowel? Effectively, vowel for the purposes of phonotactics, as in it can stand on its own as a syllable. It can stand yeah, at the, the center of a syllable cluster of a syllable, whatever. Yeah. All votes for having it be a pseudo vowel. All votes against. We could add a a rule that All fixes votes of not carrying. I am I'm, I'm forestalling the vote. Um, what? Yeah. Um, Motion I mean, to like, adjourn? not quite yet. Um, what would be the example of using the bilabial of, of using the bilabial trill in a word? What would be the what? What would be a good example of using the bilabial trill in a word? Um, would we only be using it at the start or end of a word? Well, we can't use. Well, no, we can use it at the start. Uh, I suppose so. It could be a, a you could make a, a syllable with it as the center, like um, uh, uh, what's a good example? Right, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Or we would say no, it's just a consonant. Because if it's if it's not part of that wow. syllable, then it needs a vowel. In other words, it has to be a vowel, or it's going to not be allowed to be there. Would inserting a vowel, a vowel help though? Because like the reason why the only reason because right now it could work as a one syllable cluster, because you have the vowel in the core and yeah. you have two consonants. Adding an, but we're saying it feels like it sounds like it's split over two. Like, yeah. Uh, love. La. Would adding another vowel actually fix that? Because it sounds like it would, it would just be La pri. Li. La pri. Pri. Write that? Please. Um, pri. It's almost like there was an R in there. B. 
It's like B except controlling it. Now you could add a phonotactic, let's say, between this and a value out of R. That might sound nice. Or... But nevertheless, it needs a value, so. Well, it's your word. Some well? What would you prefer? You vote him against it being a vowel, so how would you prefer to solve that? Just not being a vowel. Just mm, being a consonant. It's a syllabic consonant? No, just like K or I mean, Okay, so we just pretend that it's one syllable? Yeah. <laughs> Even though it doesn't sound like one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for the purposes of now, I'm just going to say. Uh, uh, going to an R doesn't sound that bad, though. So, it's in the middle of word. But okay, so that's that's an interesting form of tactic. So do we say V or do we say Bri? Bri or Bri? Bri. Or Ba or Bra? Or B or Bra? Br. 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 Or B or Bre? What sounds better? Correct. What's easier to pronounce? Bra. So, who who thinks it's easier to pronounce it without the R? Bra. Who thinks it's easier to pronounce with the R? Bra. Who thinks it's easier to pronounce with the R? Bra. Who thinks it's easier to pronounce with the R? Bra. If we add a trilled R, it gets your tongue involved as well. Bra. 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 Yeah. Bra. Bri. Three. Okay. Three. As opposed to just trying to just like yeah. Tricks. Okay. So, does that mean you're voting for doing that? I, I'm in favor of if we have uh, the bilabial trill and a bell that we insert a trilled R in between. Okay. Some up? Not no R. No. Dershin. Yeah, R sounds kind of hard to pronounce. Really? Really? Yeah. Try it. Yeah, you haven't even tried it. <laughs> Come on, come on. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll turn the camera on you and then say you have to try it. Come on, pronounce the word. That's why I'm not going to do it. Disqualified. Well, obviously, you're not going to be a very good speaker of this language. Um, so, Dershing abstains. <laughs> Technically, we already are. I'm voting them. for it, so. You have one and a half, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, no, it's with a, I would say only with a vowel. Oh. oh. That's Ooh. the trilled R, right? Yeah, that's what we've been reading the rest of. Um, so There's some sort of nothingness in between the two, and it turns into an R. Okay. It's um, sort of weird, but it's so it's weird. Adjustment. Adjustment? Okay, so. We add the R. Yes. Oh, yes, sorry. That's okay. does this mean exactly? <laughs> so uh, shall we just make um, two hypotheses each of like what the sentence as a whole could mean? How did we decide that the language was like a fusional or synthetic? I think we decided that it was mainly not fusional, but that it was isolated um, for simplicity. Uh, for simplicity. So, 
most likely what's going to happen is that each of these means one particular thing. Mm -hmm. They might not mean what would be, we would consider a word in English, like they might be the equivalent of le in Chinese, where it's just like a, a marker of sorts as we would consider it. But each of these is a separate word of its own. And it's not integrating anything else. Although it might semantically integrate something, but it's not integrating it morphologically. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah? No? Yeah? Okay. So, um, I think either the first word or the third word should, should be pronoun, a pronoun. Okay. Because they are short. So, uh, actually, yeah, we can, we can do it piece by piece like that. Sure. Well, it's just a proposition you want to make. It's, I, I think it's an interesting proposition. Short words are, the longer words are probably real words, quote unquote, and the short ones are probably either pronouns or some sort of grammatical, grammatical marker of some sort, maybe. Uh, so, we could have two pronouns in this. We could have past tense markers, we could have like progressive markers or other random stuff, pluralizers, I don't know. So, preference? Well, we could so, have evidential as well. We could have an evidential, yes. Yeah. So, uh, Dershay, what do you think? You don't offer, I ask. <laughs> What do you think about the what the small words should be? Well, or anything. Pronouns? Yeah. Both of them? Do you like the idea of having an evidential for one of them? Yeah. <laughs> Another what? thing is that if you notice the first two words end with the same. Yeah. So maybe those two could be related morphologically. Oh, that's good. But they wouldn't be if they were isolating. They'd be related by etymology maybe. Mm -hmm. But they wouldn't be more related morphologically. Can be isolating and with cases. I don't think. So. What would you treat Latin as? I don't think you could have an isolating language that has integrated cases. You might be able to have an isolating language that has like cases that are separate from the word. Um, but I'm not an expert on case mm -hmm. systems. Please tell me if, if I'm wrong. I don't know. Really. Sorry. Not a specialist. Uh, yeah, I I don't think you'd be able to do that, but I'm not sure. They could be case markers mm -hmm. separately, but then if they, if they if you had case markers, they'd probably be really short. Um, if you like, since you want to indicate what the case mark or like what the markers go with, which word, um, uh, could they well, maybe? Yeah, that would be syntactic. Like assimilation, essentially. Um, Where the marker would maybe adopt some characteristic of the word that it's... But then it'd be fusional. Would it? Yeah, that would, that would be a fusional characteristic. Okay. Unless, unless you considered it to have, like, separate words. Oh. Like you have a female case marker and a male case marker or something like that. In which case it's lexicalized, but it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't integrate morphologically. Okay. We're saying we have a few isolating language. Yeah, it's just that he has an interesting point about the similar endings and so. Yeah, or we could just do without a case system. Lots of languages do. Uh, okay, so, um, some while you are thinking of it as pronouns or as an evidential, so mm -hmm. what would you propose for the meaning of this? Where's the stress in the last word? Oh, yes. Uh, labri or labri? What sounds better? Former, personally, but that's just labri. aesthetic. That's an aesthetic choice of mine. That's how it's normally chosen. <laughs> um, Samuel, what do you think sounds better? Labri or labri? Labri. Labri? Yeah. You're saying? Labri. Mm. Mm. So do I. But I'm thinking 
if I do that, then it's going to change the stress that we've had so far. And there'd have to be some sort of rule, rule for that. Uh, there always has to be a rule. Well, right now it's just last, or ultimate. Yeah, so lab, labri, so why would that be different from krikrak? Syllable. Syllable, yeah. Syllable with, syllable with the glottal stop or L. Um, otherwise, it's the last syllable. Why? Well, just as a way of um, putting it. Why do you have to have rules for that? We can, can't it be randomly? Oh, oh, you could you have could. just um, yeah, you could dictionary just have assigned. It. Actually, as far as I know, English yeah, and Spanish don't have rules for that. Spanish does. Latin does. What? Latin does. English. Spanish doesn't. English um, does, but it's um, partially different. Like, we have lots of words where um, the noun, I think, occurs on the first and the verb occurs on the second. Yeah, there are things like um, that. But I don't think there are things like that in Spanish. What are, what's an example of a, a noun and a verb that are the same word and have two syllables? Object, object. Yeah, object. So, objective. Is the verb an object? Yeah, there are many rules like that in English, but I don't think there are in Spanish. I'm fairly sure there are, but I, I'm not Do you know Spanish. Any? On Spanish language, it's, it's usually penultimate, isn't it? Unless it has a stress marker. It's usually anywhere. But I don't know. <laughs> so we can just say that, yeah, let's just say it's um, idiosyncratic and labri is one word and labri is a different word. Possibly, yeah. And you just have to know. <laughs> so, yes, so blah, blah, blah. what was I talking about just now? Um, meanings? Yeah, we were assigning meanings. So, sum up. What do you think? I'm trying to think of something. Or Philip, what do you think? <laughs> um, just as a personal feel, I, I do agree that both the shorter words should probably be um, less real yeah. words. Um, I think we can probably do something a little bit more if we treat the first one as a pronoun and somehow figure something out because of the similarity of endings, because I like that idea. Um, in which case, I might go with the... Uh, Wait, what? I, who? Because of the similarity of endings between the first two? Yes. Okay. Um, and have our second short word be um, more grammatical. Okay, so we'll propose something. Um, what does that say on your shift? It's just the uh, ring script. Oh. Yeah. Um, he needing to study much will read in the library. Let's do something not so boring. <laughs> I you suggest something. Yeah, it's probably going to be the it. <laughs> or George Bush. Or boy George. Yeah. Whatever your taste. I am not to judge. No. Then just suggest something. Just suggest. Don't, don't put pen to paper yet. Or chalk to board. I don't have one suggestion. Uh -huh. Then speak. Um, the first word is an evidential for obviously, like okay. something everybody knows. Sure. Here, crack is sex. Okay. Obviously. Can <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. you tell someone that doesn't get laid enough? Yes. Aye <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, is uh, is. Is like a copula. No, copula. To be um, yeah. present tense. That's a copula. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. It's the and special word. La Brie is cool. Obviously, sex is cool. Yeah. <laughs> I like three quarters of that. <laughs> Which part? Do you I like? think. Obviously, is... something is cool. Or yes. Obviously, sex is. <laughs> no, I like. I think <laughs> Kirkak is a good word for sex. Tests. What? I think it sounds funny for sex. <laughs> yes, and you also made pronouns based on dick and cunt. It's bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's all I have to say on that. Um, Dirty. <laughs> what would you suggest? Uh, I mean, the first one I'm pronoun, I mean, my fish is beautiful. <laughs> my fish is beautiful. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I would say that the first one is an evidential and the third is a pronoun. Um, Coppola was fun. Fishers in verb. Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, what kind of river does this make you think of? But um, it's both, so it's it's implied. Both. I'm not distinguishing whether it's a verb or a noun, and it can be used as either metonymic. Okay. Metonymically, sorry. Mm, that's fine. Uh, all right. Yes. Do you have an idea? I already suggested one. What have, did you have a comment on mine? Um, no, I think it has merit. I think we need to vote them. Okay, so does anyone else, someone else like someone else's idea? I like the uh, Coppola okay. idea. Is that well? Do you like anyone else's? Just yours? You have boring ideas. <laughs> what fishes and libraries. <laughs> Comment. <laughs> I like the library one. What? Like anyone else? <laughs> yeah, I like the library one. Library one was mine. Thank you. Okay. And yeah. Okay. Um, I'm kind of bored of copulas, but if you want to. Um, <laughs> Why are you bored of copulas? They're common. <laughs> yes, that is true. Do you Sorry, either? they're. Catch it on tape. Uh, yeah, you missed that. Sorry. Focus. It doesn't. You're really soft. Keep acting. Go. Yes. Yes. Go. Uh, blah, 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 blah. so would you have that as an evidential? Um, the huck. Yeah. Um. Or a noun. A pronoun, rather. An I is just a copula. I take it as an evidential. I think okay. we need evidentials in our lives. And what does this evidential mean, pray tell? Um, according to my cat. According to my cat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we say that it's um, according to someone who has told me? That I guess cat? my cat did tell me, so yes. And then you could say cat, hawk. And that, that would be according to my cat? Um, 
what's where is the um, evidential coming? What is indicating the uh, evidential? Huck. And what is Unless indicating you cat? To be something else. And what is indicating cat? A word that's not in the sentence. Ah, uh, all right. So like, it's sort of like a pronoun. Yeah. So you, you say cat huck, and then then it's and since huck means uh, true because someone told me who I trust. And so the word earlier we that, mentioned cat. The Next. word before that would be cat. And would we insert it in this sentence, or would it have been remembered from a previous sentence? Either. Memory is good. Okay. I'm just saying you can, it's an optional thing that you can put before the evidential, the, the basis for the evidential if it refers oh, okay. to something else. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, according to him, or it. Yeah, or. basically. Cat, according to the previous, my trust, mm -hmm. who told me so. Okay. Uh, so, what would you, what would you have for the rest of it? Um, so we have a couple. Of, we're saying something about. Amazingly awesome, is the library. Which is, are you saying Labdi is Labdi? Yeah, but that, that's my, yeah, Rome, uh, Roman, Roman language influenced vocabulary. Actually, I thought of books as well. Yeah, no, Labdi. Okay. Does Labdi la, 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 You have to have wet lips to pronounce this thing. Labdi. Does Labdi, Labdi, la, 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 Without a strong R, make you think of that. La bui. La 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 Well, maybe. Maybe. So, so you would have this something is so awesome is library. Yeah. Okay. Other suggestions. This could be something that doesn't mean that. Okay. Okay, so I'm open to counter suggestions something now. Something non non-pure, and this is something not about how cool is going to a library. <laughs> okay, fine. Give us a different suggestion, please. I don't know. Other than sex is good. <laughs> Other than sex is good. I think hit a crack is a funny word, so I don't want to use it for something like. Okay, <laughs> I can agree with that. Okay, fine. What do you think? Uh, is it a verb or a noun? Both. I like the idea of having them be both in to just distinguish what use it is syntactically. Mm. You have a much better suggestion? Let's hear it. Means? What would my what would my cat talk about? Well, what let's just ask cats? ourselves that. I don't know your cat. Well, you've never brought him. <laughs> That's true, I guess. You should mm -hmm. bring your cat. I brought mine. Well, he passed away a long time ago. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Get a new one. We've been thinking about it. Herbal sounds like most of our language. <laughs> I like herbal. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so how are you going to work sex into this now? <laughs> I don't want to have sex with herbals. <laughs> you seem like an open kind of person. <laughs> Not that open. <laughs> What's that? Copula. Oh. So what is, what is Labdri? It's funny because... Labdri. What is Labdri? Slimy. Slime? Slimy. That's wet. Slimy? Yeah. What do you think? 
<laughs> Disgusting. Anything goes. Okay. And I'm going to say that. What does slime mean? Slimy. Slime. Is um. How do you define slime? Sort of like swampy. Um. It's it's, some, it's a texture. It it's is sort of what you describe. It's sort of like liquid natural. Um. It. <laughs> it's a thicker paste that's very moist and it sticks to itself. Think and of like um, 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 algae. Yeah. Algae is very slimy. What? Algae. What's that? So uh, animal. Um, uh, 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 seen Ghostbusters? Let's just say it's not very. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Let's check movies. Yes. Like the garbage melts and stuff. And you garbage. Yeah. Food. Garbage melty is slimy. Uh, that just so melted it, garbage. Uh, it's not very good. Is it something you smell or something you touch? Touch. Well, texture. it's a texture. Slime yeah, it's a texture. texture. But slime is the object that has that texture, mm -hmm. well as the substance. So let's just saliva, really thick saliva. So, so then we get uh, reptile saliva. Syntactically, if we think of this, so this is a sentence, and is. Evidential. Are evidentials op optional? Yes. Languages with evidentials usually always have them. Really? Yeah. Um, as far as I know. Lad and doesn't. Oh. Well, that's a common. But I guess if you have evidentials, it's because you're going to use them. <laughs> yeah, but you can drop it if it's obvious. If it's obvious or if it's, or if it's continuing. Yeah, but. I think it's We've been talking about my cat for a while, so. Yeah. But they are optional only when they have already been said before. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So, evidential, then there's. Start of the sentence always? Sorry? Start of the sentence always? Do we put, where do we put the evidential in the sentence? Oh, yeah. Start. Well, evidential, let's say it's an evidential phrase. Okay. And so this could be a optional noun phrase. So, Why like, optional noun phrase? Because you could turn this into cat huck, and then that would be cat huck. Mm -hmm. and that would be an evidential phrase. Okay? That makes sense? Yes? Yeah, that makes sense. Yes. I don't think there are languages about cat evidentials, but I don't care. <laughs> there is now. <laughs> uh, so, hairball, copula, slime. So one way to form the other part of a sentence is what? Um, so let's call it a copular phrase. Which is cop, noun phrase, noun phrase. And this copula, i.e., means the thing before is described by the thing after. Okay. Right? Does that have tense of any sort? I mean, in general, would a copula like that have a tense? Um, one sec. Um, would a copula have some sort of tense associated with it? It could. You could have an integrated tense of it, but... Um, what would it convey? Like... Um, so the, a, vague, a vague translation would this is that hairballs are slimy, but it could be ha hairballs... This hairball is slimy? It's, I mean, we don't have any determiners. Contents. We don't have any determiners mm. in this. So it could be this hairball that I'm pointing to is slimy. This hairball was slimy. Mm -hmm. Hairballs in general are always slimy. Hairballs uh, in general used to be slimy. Yeah, without indicating it, it's hard to say. Okay. So 
I mean, we could just have that all be ambiguous since it's not indicated. And yeah, we would we, probably need separate need words. Insert, and then we need to insert stuff into this to, to indicate tense or whatnot. Okay. Or it could be part of the copula, where, like, for example, estar versus ser, it could be that sort of a copula. What is that? Are you eating tape? Yes, I am eating tape. Can we stay focused here? <laughs> Sorry. Um, yes, so um, what, what would you prefer for copula? Um, what does this copula mean other than that? Um, since I think we were trying to get some sort of isolating language here, I would probably just have the um, yeah. Um, just noun phrase one describes noun phrase two, and that if we want to add tense, we would insert more words for that. Okay. And so it just describes it in some sort of generic, generalized yeah. sense. So perhaps this is the ser versus a star, since it doesn't have any determiners. So this is the indefinite, or should we? So our, our nouns definite or indefinite by by default or or neutral nouns yeah so like this is hairball is being treated like a noun oh okay or as like this hairball versus like the yeah so like Euclidean I'm hairball or am I referring to some particular hairball or just the class of hairballs um well since we decided that verbs and nouns were ambiguous that they could be interchangeable mm -hmm. um would like philosophically what impact do you think that would have a similar impact on whether we're dealing with definites or indefinites? Since we have the sort of ambiguity. Mm, I think it, I think it it'd tend towards indefiniteness, but I'm not sure. I would agree, actually. Uh, Samuel, what do you think? What are we talking about? <laughs> um, there's the question of... Is it, in, is it definite or indefinite? When we have this phrase about hairballs, mm. Um, are we going to be talking, does that, should it by default mean? I guess by default it's indefinite. Okay. Otherwise you will need a word just for expressing indefinite, indefiniteness. Yeah. Which is yeah. weird. Well, either one's <laughs> possible, I think. I think it's possible to have to mark. Because would that mean this hairball, that fair, uh, fair I think ball. it's entirely possible that you could have a word that has to mark indefiniteness and definiteness and so we have v and a in english right mm -hmm. so that's this particular and some particular mm -hmm. but there's also indefinite grass mm -hmm. for example it's green yeah grass is whatever um as opposed to the grass or a grass a blade of grass a grass you can say a grass like a species of grass true um but that's metonymic um, so uh, I think it's entirely possible that you can mark indefinites as well. It would be interesting. I don't know how you'd interpret the base generic, not no, no definiteness or indefiniteness marked or implied in the case. But yeah. So that's one sentence structure. Uh, and basically, do, do you understand the syntax as it is? Yeah. So you, know, you could obviously rewrite this into S goes to etc. Right? Yeah. So uh, the way you build this up is you create more sentences you try to force it into that. And if it doesn't work, you merge stuff, or you add stuff, or you say this was wrong, and you rewrite it so that it works for all the stuff that you have so good to date. And it works itself out, more or less. It's not that bad in a way. We need more sentences. Yes, we do. Yes. Uh, let's see. How many days do we have left of class? Next, next week is already May. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. A week and a half left, right? How so many days do we have? 
the week for a week next week? One or two? Well, classes ended on the 10th. I know that. Um, then, we have one, then we have four classes left. Because I know that the 13th is a Friday. Well, let me just look at the calendar. Yeah, the, I think the Tuesday is the 10th. So, is enough, okay, so, so we, have four uh, we, we still four. have May 2nd, 4th, 6th, and 9th. And Tuesday of the week after next is the last day of classes. Mm -hmm. And then there is finals day. Yeah. So that's four classes. Uh, do you guys want to spend it continuing on this or on something else or what? This is good. We can move the same thing. What you can, you, you can, no, 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 what would you suggest? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> well, if you Something have. more related to our language, to our context. If you have a suggestion, I will be happy to entertain it. If you don't, I don't know. Come on. One minute on tape. Participate in, in your education. Uh, so yes, um, barring suggestions to the contrary, we will continue with this. So, uh, Samuel, so, well, I know you already posted part of this, so could you post the rest of what we've come up with today? Mm -hmm. You wrote it all down, right? You could, can you, do you have a digital camera you could just snap it with? Or we could just snap it with this. Uh, yeah, just press the still picture button. I, I will, as soon as we're done. No, you can, continue, you can do it while. It's well, there's almost no tape left. Okay, so anyway, bye. <laughs> or meetings or whatnot. Just stuff. And... Thing, basically, just prep yourself for, for weird things to add, okay? Or interesting things or whatever. You, you've always wanted a conlang that has the, has, <laughs> as a phoneme. <laughs> sure. Uh, so yeah, we, we can be silly and that is okay. Uh, that's what we'll do on Monday. So, uh, see you later. Hope we don't all get drenched by the rain or struck by lightning or anything. So, bye bye.